What's up everyone? So I'm going to try and make today's tutorial pretty quick and to the point. We're going to look at how we can turn any sample into a wavetable oscillator within the Akai MPC-1, though this would apply to MPC Live as well as MPC X users as well, since it's the uh, same operating system. So we're going to start from an empty project. Let's just click empty and let's load up a sample. It can be any sample. I'm going to choose from the factory content just so we're all working with the same thing. We'll just use this base. Why not? This 80s base load. So we'll go back to our main and we'll go to sample edit. Here we can see our waveform. So the idea of a wavetable oscillator is that we want to take a very tiny fragment of this waveform and loop through it at such a fast rate that it becomes its own tone. And so we're using the sample values within this sample as the basis for an oscillator. So the same way a sine wave oscillates with a, a sine-like motion or a sawtooth wave uh, oscillates with a sawtooth shape, we're using the shapes within a sample as our oscillator. So in order to determine the pitch at which our oscillator will be oscillating, we need to know two things. First, the sample rate that we're working with. In this case, for the MPC, it's 44.1, unless you set it to something different. We're working with 44.1 kilohertz. And B, we need to know the hertz that our desired frequency is. And so in this case, we want a pitch at C4, which vibrates at 262 hertz. And so we divide 44,100 samples by 262, and we get about 168, 169. So let's go into our sample and we can double click the end Let's put in 168 for that. If we hit the pad in the top left, that's going to loop our sample between the start and end points. And so we'll hear our wavetable oscillator. Let's listen. So there we have it. And just to show what we can do with a wavetable oscillator, it's going to change its pitch as well as its timbre, depending on the values within the wavetable that it's looping through. So let's listen to how that can change. And so we can play around with the timbre a little bit by changing the start time. Let's put the start time, for instance, at 2000. Oops and changing the end time, let's bring it back to a difference of 168. So we'll put in 2,168. Now let's listen. So you can hear that, that tone is different from the tone that we had when we were just using the sample start time at zero. And so if you play around with these values, if you have a different start time, uh, it will vary the quality of the sound, the timbre, depending on what values are between the start and end markers. And you can also use multiples of 168 to create different octave variations. So for instance, we can put in uh, 2,336, and we could put in, say, uh, 2,000, 672. So you can hear that the pitch is dropping in octaves each time we multiply the uh, difference between our start and end point by an integer value of 2. We can go into our main and let's choose a keyboard program or a key group program rather which is the uh, piano selection right here in our track view. And then we go to program edit, sample. Let's choose our sample. And already it has the start and end times in there. And be sure that your pad loop is on. Let's 
let's try to bring this uh, time down. If you hit shift and then the 16 levels button, it will bring you to your notes uh, menu. And here I'm just going to choose chromatic. I'm going to choose C chromatic just because it's a standard pitch and we can play with the octave here. So already we have an oscillator, a synth that we've created out of a sample and it can be any sample. Again, the shape of the waveform is going to change the timbre. So you can play around with loading up different samples. And of course, once you have a key group program, you can go into your program edit and we can start to play around with uh, different parameters like the filter, obviously. We can add some filter envelope. We can play around with the uh, amplitude envelope. We can add an LFO. And we can also layer this sound. So we can add the same thing for our layer. Let's give it a different start and end time so that the timbre will be a bit different. So maybe we'll go to a start time of, let's just say uh, uh, 18,800. Then our end time will also make it a difference of 168 which bring us to 18,968. Then we want to loop. We can detune that. And then we can play with our layers. So we can kind of adjust the levels. We can bring uh, one of our layers down an octave. So you can see that you can get some really rich tones out of this. And of course we can add effects and we can just start crafting the sound and shaping it in whatever way we want. I really just wanted to show you how to create a wavetable oscillator for the key group program in the MPC1, MPCX, MPC Live with any sample. So just remember you want a difference of 168 between the sample start and the sample end time. You want to turn on your pad loop and then essentially you're just good to go. Then you can start playing with envelopes, start playing with layering, start adding effects, start filtering. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found it informative. Uh, please like, please subscribe. There's more tutorials to come. So I'll see you next time.